All right, so this is the video that's probably the most important out of all your trig ones. Today, in, or right now, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to solve for missing sides. You know, you got your little triangle, he's real sad, he's missing a side. So these are the steps you have to use. First, you're gonna label your sides. We've done that already. You're gonna label it opposite, hypotenuse, adjacent, and you have to make sure you're paying attention to the angle that's not the right angle. After you've done that, you need to look at those three sides and see which side has a number with it and which side has a variable, usually x. The third side that does not have the letter or the variable and does not have the number, you need to cross out, you need to ignore it. That's the one that we're not using. Your third step, you need to determine which trig ratio you're using. So if you're given the opposite and hypotenuse, if you're given the adjacent and hypotenuse, you need to match it up with whether it is sine, cosine, or tangent. Once you have decided which of your three trig ratios it is, you are going to write that trig ratio, so sine, cosine, or tangent. Next to it, in parentheses, you're going to put the angle given. That is not the 90 degree angle. And it's going to be equal to the side over the side. You need to be careful with this because if it is opposite over adjacent, if you're using tangent, you have to put the opposite side on top and the adjacent side on the bottom. Your last step will be to cross multiply to solve. And don't forget that you need to put the left side over one. So I've got three examples I'm going to go through with you and we're going to do all the steps. The first one, I told you to look at the angle we're given. So here we are given the angle 32. I then told you to go through and label all the sides. So I know across from the right angle is my hypotenuse. I know across from the angle I'm given is my opposite. So that means the third one has to be my adjacent. Now I need to look. Two of these have something with it. So O, the opposite side has X with it. The hypotenuse has 18, but the adjacent doesn't have anything. So we're going to cross it out. We're going to ignore it. I now need to decide which of my three trig ratios, sine, cosine, or tangent, use opposite over hypotenuse. And if you remember your Sokotoa, you know that sine uses opposite over hypotenuse. I'm now going to set up that ratio I gave you. It's like the little equation. I told you to take your trig ratio, which we now have decided is sine. In parentheses, you put the angle I give you, which is 32. And sine is equal to the opposite side, which here is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 18. Once you set it up like this, you are ready to cross multiply to solve. So remember, on the left side, you have to put it over 1. When I cross multiply, x times 1 gives me x, and that's equal to the other two parts cross multiplied as 18 sine of 32. Now at school, you would plug this part into the calculator. Once it's x equals, it's ready to be plugged in. But since you are at home watching this, you're just going to leave it as 18 sine of 32. So the next example, again, we're going to look at our angle, which is 57. We're going to label all of our sides. Across from it, you have the opposite. Across from the 90 is the hypotenuse, so that means 18 is the adjacent. When I look at these three, the one that doesn't have something on its side is the opposite, so we're not using it. I need to pay attention. I have the adjacent. I have the hypotenuse. The only three of our trig ratios that uses adjacent and hypotenuse is cosine. So when I set it up, the cosine of our angle, 57, is equal to my adjacent side, 18, over my hypotenuse, which is x. This one's a little trickier. We still put the left side over 1, but when we cross multiply, I have 18 times 1. It gives me 18, and it's equal to, we cross multiply the other two parts. I put the x in front, and then we have the cosine of 57. This does not look like x equals something. I'm not done like I was in the last example. My goal here is to get x by itself. But if I look, I have this whole cosine of 57 attached to it. That means I'm dividing both sides by the cosine of 57. When I do that on the right side, they cancel out. They go away, and I'm just left with x equals... 18 divided by the cosine of 57, 
And like I said in the last example, if it's x equals, you're ready to plug it in your calculator, you're done. You can leave it just like it is. All right, in the last example we have here, we have 36. Across from it is x, so that's our opposite side. Across from the 90, we have the hypotenuse. And then finally, our 16 is our adjacent side. I look, the only one opposite adjacent or hypotenuse that doesn't have anything on its side is the hypotenuse, so I'm going to cross it out. You then need to ask yourself, which of our three trig ratios uses the opposite and adjacent? We only have one. It is tangent. So tangent of 36 is equal to, remember, it's opposite, x over adjacent, 16. I have it set up. I can now start to cross multiply. I put the left side over 1. When I do that, x times 1 gives me x, and that's equal to 16 tangent of 36, and you are done. I have three examples for you here that you can try out if you need more practice. They're heavy on the test tomorrow. Um, so if you need to just pause the video, you can write them down, work them out, send them to me if you have any questions. Um, if not, then that's all I have to show you.